you so much for joining us. The migrant crisis, transportation, taxes and spending. There's absolutely no shortage of important issues brewing on Beacon Hill right now. And that makes this a great moment to talk with the president of the Massachusetts Senate, uh, Ashland Senator Karen Spilka. Senator, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's always great to have you here. We enjoy your visits. Uh, before we get into the Beacon Hill stuff, we're taping here on a Thursday morning, the previous evening, or early this morning, I should say, several Boston police officers were hurt as they removed an illegal encampment set up by anti-Israel protesters in a, on a public street that's part of the Emerson College campus downtown. Similar scenes are being played out on campuses across the country, including your alma mater, Cor Cornell. As a prominent member of the Jewish community, what goes through your mind when you see scenes like this? Well, I firmly believe in freedom of speech and peaceful protests. I believe people have the right and should be allowed to do that. Uh, but, you know, like anything else, people should be obeying the laws. And if uh, they're uh, infringing on ingress and egress and, and other things, and we're told, as, as I understand it, of uh, what the rules were, um, you know, I, I, be I believe that people need to be peaceful and, and be heard that way. I support the, the peaceful protests. Um. What about the political fallout from it? I mean, just now, there are some voices agitating for Beacon Hill leaders uh, and federal delegation leaders to be more outspoken about all this. Do you have any concerns about that? I don't know exactly what, what, you know, what the, the concerns are, but, but again, I am a firm believer of peaceful protesting, and uh, should, that's what, the way that it should go. All right. You know, and the police are trained in crowd control. I'm not an expert in that, certainly. Well, uh, let's talk about taxes. Uh, Governor Healy's Municipal Empowerment Act is moving through the committee process. That would allow cities and towns to raise a range of local option taxes, including the ever-popular motor vehicle excise tax. Meanwhile, the city of Boston wants Beacon Hills OK to slap a new tax on certain real estate transactions, uh, lift the cap on commercial real estate taxation. You've been an advocate for more state spending. What about the taxation side of the equation? In your view, how much is too much? Of taxation yeah. or spending? <laughs> well, well, both, but let's talk taxes well, here. Well, I, I believe, first of all, um, that now is not the time to take our foot off the pedal in economic development and housing and uh, lowering the cost of college and other things. If we want to continue being a leader with our innovation economy and growing and being a strong economy here in Massachusetts, I believe that we need to keep investing in our strengths, which are our people, our residents, definitely. That is one of our biggest strengths here in Massachusetts, our education system and our innovation economy. Okay. That's the spending side. What about taxation? I mean, it has to be in balance, correct? Right, right. And we did do a major tax relief bill, the largest in over a generation last session, last year, that uh, gave back a bill, over a billion dollars. We uh, did a lot for housing with the senior circuit breaker, the rental deduction. We, uh, the Senate led on housing tax credits for more affordable housing and market rate housing across the state. That will, alone will create tens of thousands of units across the state. Mm -hmm. So we have, we ha and there, there's so many more, the estate tax and capital gains, short-term capital gains, if you remember, and other things. That, Again, like anything else, it's a balance that we need to try to keep investing in our people. And the Senate, sort of our, my, the umbrella guidance is to make Massachusetts more affordable, competitive, and equitable. 